Hey there everyone, Udaldor here and welcome to a mod spotlight on the brilliant mod Compact Machines by Dave Nonymous. Today we are taking a look at version 1.10 of the mod and it is made for Minecraft 1.7.10 which is currently the only version the mod is out for. Now what does this mod do? It allows you to make small rooms inside of blocks. You place down a single block in the world and you use a special tool to travel to the inside of that block and inside of this block you have uh, a specifically sized work area where you can do whatever you want to. You can set up an ore processing plant, you can build a house, you can build a farm, you can do whatever you want to inside this space. So before we can actually get to the good stuff we're gonna have to walk through some very very simple crafting recipes that you're gonna need to know if you want to use this mod. Now to start off to get started, you're going to want to make yourself one of these, an atom shrinking module. This is very easy to craft, you just need 6 pieces of glass, 2 pieces of redstone and a sticky piston. Again, that's going to get you a shrinking module. Now, next up, you're also going to want to make yourself an enlarging module, which is made the same way, but you just replace the sticky piston in the middle for a normal one. Once you have those two modules, you can make yourself a world resizing interface. Use the two modules with some iron, some gold, and some redstone to get yourself one of these. Once you have six of those, you can combine that with a diamond to get yourself a world resizing cube. Now this is the thing, this is the main crafting component that you're going to use to make these compact machine blocks. Now, you have a few different sizes here. And depending on what you, material you use to make these compact machines, you're going to get different sizes of rooms. The more expensive the material is, the bigger your room is going to be. So we have wood, iron, gold, obsidian, diamonds, and nether stars. Those are the materials that we can use. And that's going to basically uh, give us six different sizes that we can pick from. Again, that's going to get you some compact machines. Now, next up, you're going to make yourself a personal shrinking device. Uh, this is the tool that you're going to use to travel in and out uh, for, from the block. So without this, you cannot actually enter or exit the block. So make sure you make yourself one of these. Three diamonds, three nether quartz, a piece of redstone, and two of these interfaces is going to get you one of those. Now we're going to get to the quantum entangler a little later in the video, so I'm just going to leave this recipe for now. And we're going to get started. I'm going to show you the basic features of this mod. Now, once you've made some of these compact machines and one of these personal shrinking devices, you're going to want to take your compact machine. I'm going to go with the smallest one, the, the one made with wood. This is a 3x3x3 one. We're going to place this down in the world anywhere. And you can see it's, well, it's just a block. Just a normal block. Now, we're going to take our personal shrinking device now and we're going to use this and we're going to right click on this block with the device. This is going to teleport us into a 3x3x3 three by three by three area. Now we cannot exit this area, we cannot, we cannot expand it in any way. We are stuck inside this room until we use the personal shrinking device to get out. So make sure you do not lose this inside of here or you will be stuck here forever. You're gonna have to use some other way to get out if you lose it and uh, it's not always that easy. So. Once we're in here, we can do whatever we want to. We can uh, put down some stone, we could uh, get a furnace and uh, smelt up some gold ore with some wood. We could uh, put down a ladder or two and climb up here. We can do anything we'd like in here. So we're pretty much free to do whatever we want to. Now once you're done in here, just right click with this tool again and you are out. Uh, at the same spot uh, that you stood on when you entered the block. Now, we're gonna put down another one now. I'm gonna go ahead and put down uh, this one, the one made with iron. This is a five by five by five workspace. We're gonna enter this and you will notice that it is a little bigger than the last one. Now this time around, we actually, you know, we have more possibility to, possibilities, sorry, uh, this may around. We can actually walk around a little bit here and uh, do some more advanced things in here because, well, the workspace is bigger. 
That's the only difference though, the size of the actual area. Again, right click to get out and we are back right where we were. We're going to compare this to the biggest size. Now, of course, this is extremely expensive to make. Considering we need eight nether stars for this, it's not very cheap, no. <laughs> but we can enter this and you can see that, well, this is quite large. Again, you cannot exit this in any way. You can just build inside this area. Okay, so... I think one of the coolest parts about this mod is that you can transport items, fluids and RF power in and out of these blocks without any real limits. Now what does that mean? Well, it allows for some really cool, fancy, advanced and powerful setups, at least from what I've seen. Now let's say for example you want to build an ore processing plant inside of this block right here. So I'm just going to enter this block and you can see that I have a sag mill right here. Now the sag mill is a machine from Ender.io that will consume RF power to process items. Okay? Now, how would we get power in here? Because, well, we don't have a source of power right now. To figure all of this out, we're gonna have to take a closer look and pay some more attention to how this cube looks. Now, if we look at one of the sides of this cube, we can see that the middle block looks a little different from the rest. Now, this is the block that you're gonna use for item fluid and power IO. So looking at this, you can see that this is an interface and the side of this is east. We can also see that by right clicking on it and hovering over the slot right here. It says that this is east. This is south, this is west, this is north, this is up and this is down. Now if we head back to the overworld and we take a look at uh, the block right here, you can see that we have the same sides here. Okay, so we have west, we have south, we have east, we have north, and we have up. Now, if we right click here, you can see that this looks a little different from uh, what the interface looked like. Right here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six slots. Now, all of these, uh, well, each of these are for one of the sides in the world. So we have east, up, north, down, south, and west. Same sides as we do uh, inside the cube. Now, uh, basically this is where we can see the buffers for fluids and items and power. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the buffers right now. So, uh, to get some power into this block, we're going to have to, of course, hook up some power conduits. And I'm going to hook this up to the south side. And uh, the power conduits of my choice is the Ender IO ones. But you can use any power conduits that are compatible with the RF system. I'm going to place down a power source in form of a capacitor bank that's going to start to put power in this machine. Now again, like I said, I connected this to the south side and you can see now, hovering over the south slot, that we have 10,000 RF in here. Now, the buffer can hold 10,000 RF, no more, no less. So, if we travel to the inside of the block once again, we can see, if we right click on the north side, for example, this is still empty, same goes for east. But if we right click on the south side now, you can see that we have the same kind of slot here as we do in the overworld, and we have an RF buffer of 10,000 RF. Now, if we want to take this power and draw it into this machine, you might think it's as simple as just hooking up two energy conduits. Ah. But that is not the case. We actually need to do some settings in here. You'll see that nothing happens, we're not getting any power in here, and the buffer isn't dropping either. You can see that this is set to disabled, and we actually need to set this to another mode. We're going to set this to importing. This means we're going to import to the inside of the block from the overworld, okay? So do not mix this up with importing into this interface, we're actually importing into this block. Right now, we are getting power in our sag mill. So it's that simple, you just need to hook up a power source to one of the sides in the overworld and then uh, continue the power line on the inside of the block and just setting this to import. Now we're going to head back and you'll see that we are dropping power in the capacitor bank. So this is being transferred to the sag mill inside the block. Very, very, very cool. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook up a power source uh, to this side as well, and this is the west side. You can see that now both 
the south and the west side have power. And of course, this is fluctuating a little bit due to the fact that we are, uh, well, draining power from it. I'm going to head back in here now and uh, we're going to find the west side, which is here. I'm going to go ahead and set this to importing, which means we're now going to get power in these conduits. I'm going to put this in this capacitor bank here. And uh, now this is filling up uh, from, from the overworld capacitor bank. So that's how you get power into the block. But if you want to get it out, it's a little different. Now, uh, I'm going to draw power from this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up some conduits and I'm going to connect this to an interface, just like you would guess. I'm going to hook this up to the north side and I'm going to set this to uh, extract power. I don't need a lever, uh, but I'm going to set this to extract power from the capacitor bank. You'll notice that the buffer fills up, just like you would guess. And what happens now? Do we set this to import? No. We don't want to import from the other side of this uh, block to the inside. We want to export from the block to the outside. So you set this to exporting now. So heading back to the overworld, we can see now, again, the north side has power in its buffer. We're going to find the north side. We're going to connect a capacitor bank on this side. And you can now see that we are getting power from the inside of the block and now out. So you could set up an ore processing plant in there, you could get power in, or you could set up a power production plant and get power out. So it really does work both ways. It's very, very, very cool. So I hope you got the basic gist of that. I'm gonna walk through how items and fluids work now, real quick. Now for items, it works the exact same way. I'm gonna head into this block and let's say I want to get some items into a chest that is right here. There you go. This is where I wanna get my items. Now uh, I'm gonna use the west side for that. So I'm gonna head back to the overworld and find the west side on this block, which is here. I'm gonna put down a hopper. That is one way of doing it. Uh, you can, of course, use any power, uh, any item conduits you'd like. Uh, but a hopper works just fine. I'm gonna put in some items like this and I'm gonna head to the inside of the block again. Now you'll see that the buffer is starting to fill up. Now the buffer for items is 64, which is the max stack size uh, in Minecraft. So you can keep one stack of items in here and that's it. So again, this is set to importing, which is what we want it to be set to. Uh, for for us to be able to get items into here. If we set this to exporting, it's going to try to put the items back into the hopper and that's not going to work very well as you can see because the hopper wants to put them back. So I'm going to put this to set this to importing again. And I'm going to just connect some of these power conduits. Now, uh, I don't know why I keep saying power conduits. These are item conduits, not power conduits. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and set this to insert because we want to get the items into the chest now this is going to have to be set to uh, extract items because we want to extract the items from this okay and i'm going to apply a redstone signal and that should start pulling the items into this chest so it draws the items from the internal buffer and puts them into the chest as this empties we should see some iron ore coming in here at some point Let's see, is that not the fact? You know what, I think I might have to chunk load this area actually. That's also something to keep in mind, you might want to chunk load your... Uh, well, uh, the, the areas, uh, at least in the overworld. So now, let's head back, and now we should see the iron coming. Yeah, there we go, there's the iron. So it really does work the same way uh, there. Just make sure you put it to, uh, set this to the, whatever mode you need it to be, and you should be good. Now, to export items works the same way as exporting power does. We want to put items into the buffer, of course. Uh, so let's start by getting the items to the buffer, like uh, by doing that. And we want this to be set to exporting, of course, because we want to uh, get the items out of here. 
So let's head back, find that side. I believe that was north. We're going to put down a chest here. And you'll notice that it automatically pushes the stuff in the buffer into this chest. Very, very brilliant. Now, it works the exact same way for fluids. I'm going to just show you that real quick as well. Uh, I'm going to show you that in another uh, block. So we're going to go ahead and put down one of these. Going to enter it just by doing this. And uh, we want to get the fluids in here to this tank. Okay. So let's see. This is the south side. So we would want to hook up the conduits to the south side of the, of the block, of course. That's right here. Going to hook those up. And now... We want to extract the liquids from the tank, pump the liquids into the block, of course, like so. And you'll notice that the buffer for fluids is actually one bucket. So 1000 millibuckets is what that is saying us. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up and you'll notice that the buffer still stays at one bucket. So let's head back into the block and find the south side. That's right here. We're going to set this to importing, and there we go. Again, importing is going to automatically push, if that's a possibility. Now, it can automatically push into fluid conduits, because that's just the way they work. And that's going to fill this tank up in here. Now, let's do something like this. I'm going to hook up this to here, set this to extract, and set this to export. Head back here and see if this tank will fill up with water. It should. Yeah. So now we're transporting fluids from this tank to this tank through a tank inside this block. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically what you can do. You can do items, you can do power, you can do fluids. Uh, but that's not it. There are a few other things you can do as well. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the bundled cables from Project Red, but what they allow you to do is transport multiple redstone signals uh, through one cable, pretty much. So right now, this is going to turn on the pink lamp. Well, this is pink wire, this is pink wire. This is going to turn on this, and this should turn on this. Now, compact machines actually support these... Compa uh, th these um, bundled wires. So what we can do is we can actually hook up this bundled cable to a compact machine. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a compact machine right here. We're going to enter this and we are going to head back. Actually, I need to make sure. Yeah, I hooked this up to the to the east side, right? So we can head back in and we can uh, find the east side. And uh, go ahead and uh, do something like this. Now, uh, the colors we had were white, yellow, and pink. So, if we take a look now, uh, I'm going to turn on yellow and pink. We're going to head back in. And you can see that uh, pink the pink wire is on. And we can see that by doing this. You can also see that the yellow wire should be on. And you can see that the white one is actually off. So you can actually, uh, <laughs> you can actually transport redstone signals uh, in, into the block like this. So it's very pretty simple. Works just the way you would expect it to work. It's a very brilliant feature. Now, another mod that Compact Machines support is Applied Energistics 2. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a very, very basic uh, ME chest system. I'm going to put down uh, this chest here and put a 4K ME storage cell in here. And I'm going to connect this to... Let's see here. I'm just going to connect this with a cable to the south side of this. Um, actually, let's head into the block and find the south side. That's right here. I'm going to go ahead and put down uh, an ME terminal right here, okay? Uh, let's head back and uh, connect this up. I'm also going to connect one of these, an ME terminal. I'm going to put some items in here. So let's put some of this stuff in. 
And let's go into the block. And you'll see now that this device is online and we can access the items that are in the ME chest out there from the inside right here. Very, very brilliant. It works just the way you would expect. Uh, great compatibility with AE2 channels. Works no problem. Now, I did say earlier in the video that we were going to talk about the Quantum Entangler, and it's time for that now. Now, what the Quantum Entangler allows you to do is connect two compact machines to the same room. Okay, so that's what it does. To make one of these, you're going to need six pieces of nether quartz, two of these interfaces, and one nether star. So it's not the cheapest item to make. Now, if you want to connect two rooms, make sure no, not two rooms. If you want to connect two blocks to the same room, make sure you have two base compact machines of the same size. So I'm going to go for the obsidian one, which is pretty big. Now, put them down. Enter one of them. Do not enter both. It only works if one of them is not entered before, okay? So I'm going to enter this one now. That's going to generate this room. And I'm going to just do this. I'm going to write hi. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so uh, now this is uh, this is in one uh, room. Okay. Now what would happen if I entered this? It would generate another room, but that's not what we want this time. We want to connect these so they go to the same room. Now to do that, we are going to need two Nether stars. We're gonna have to upgrade these with Nether stars, and you do that by just right-clicking with the Nether stars on them like so. Now once you've done that, take your quantum entangler, right click on the one uh, that you use to generate the room, and then uh, right click on the one that you want to link to that one. So I want to link this compact machine to that compact machine, so now I'll right click here. That's going to eat up my quantum entangler, and now these two are linked together. If I enter this compact machine over here, we're going to spawn in the same room that says hi. <laughs> so it's really very simple uh, to connect two of these. It just, well, it's pretty expensive. You need three nether stars to do it. So make sure you know what you're doing before wasting three nether stars. Just a tip. Now, to just wrap things up here, uh, I just want to mention that Compact Machines actually adds its own villager. So this will spawn in uh, various villages uh, here and there, and it'll trade you items for emeralds. So uh, here you can get a quantum entangler for 16 emeralds, which I find actually, I think that's a very good deal considering you need another star to make a quantum entangler otherwise. And it's not always that easy to, you know, get a hold of another star. Did you hear that? He, he left. Yeah. So, last thing I want to show you is just a very, very, very basic setup that I uh, set up just before uh, making the spotlight. And uh, I'm just going to enter here and I'm going to show you real quick that you can actually fall outside. So be careful. Now, uh, <laughs> here I have a farming station. This will receive power from the west side. And it'll send items over to the north side. Now, this doesn't have any power currently. We're going to need some power. So I'm going to flip this lever. And that is going to send power from this capacitor bank into the compact machine. Now, again, be careful with placing items in the middle of these rooms. It's going to basically, well, you can't fall out. And if you do, that's not very fun. So there we go. This is now getting power gonna give this farming station uh, a hoe and an axe and that's going to start planting this stuff down gonna get a watering can this is from extra utilities and will basically help things grow faster so it's gonna grow really really fast now now what I have have this set up to do is once this harvests the wheat, it's going to send this wheat over to the buffer at the north side. And you'll see that, hopefully. 
see it coming. If we do this and then quickly, maybe you can see it. No, okay. Well, if we head back to the overworld, at least you're going to see the wheat here in this barrel. So it sends it to this buffer and over on this side, extract it from the buffer over to this barrel. So that's a very, very simple setup that you can do. Now, uh, again, be careful when building these because it is very easy to fall out if you put stuff in the middle of the room. I ask you to be careful with that. Uh, it's not fun if you fall out and lose all your things. That's probably a bug. Uh, it should be resolvable, I, I hope. Um, but yeah, this is basically what this dimension looks like on the outside. When you create rooms, uh, well, when you enter a room, they get created like this. So you'll basically find all these rooms in this dimension and you can actually enter these rooms. And now I'm in this room and uh, you always spawn at the same point. When you get back, you always spawn where you entered uh, one of these blocks. But basically using stuff like the Staff of Traveling, you can actually get outside of this block and uh, fly around. So that's basically how it works. You have a separate dimension for all these things. Now that is it for the spotlight. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you love the mod. I absolutely love it, that's for sure. So uh, go click the link in the description. That'll lead you to this mod's CurseForge page and uh, you can download the mod there. Uh, I recommend you do that. It's very fun to play with. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, if you enjoyed this video and uh, all that stuff, if you would like to support me, of course, as always, subscribe to the channel, like the video and all that stuff. I also have Let's Plays if you're interested. And yeah, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye bye. Hey there you. Thanks for watching the entire video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to support me, please consider following me on Twitter and supporting me on Patreon. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as liking the video. Again. Thanks for watching. Black Label Hosting offers great, reliable, fast web hosting for a great price. They offer a variety of packages, so whether you are planning on hosting a small website for you or a big one for your company, Black Label Hosting covers your needs. They also offer game servers for a selection of games. Use the discount code 10OFF to get a 10% off on your first payment. This discount code is valid until the 1st of January 2015.